Good morning all, welcome back to Soul Granny Soul. Today we are going to look at what to do with all of our leftover fatigue. Um, so we have many different wines here, many different uh, companies. We have some Tonga treats, some Artesian fatigue. We have many different uh, random pieces. And what do we do with all these? Because they don't really match up together. Um, so I was trying to come up with a way that we could still utilize all these. I came up with this quilt box that will look very pretty because the one thing fatigues all have in common is black makes them pop. Black quilt block, put on black, put on point uh, with a little fan in the middle. You could do this design in any, if you wanted to do little four patch or even smaller yet a little nine patch or maybe you want to do a half square triangle or an hourglass something like that in the middle uh it really won't matter you could mix and match them throughout the quilt so all i use for this block is this so i used a total of three pieces out of a layer cake which were uh, robert kaufman kona black and i cut the first one i cut into five inch squares because they do measure 10 by 10. So I just cut them down into five by fives. You will need two matching squares, five inch charm squares for these outside edges on that. You're gonna need one color for these corners. So you can make it any color you want. They don't gotta match with each other. This is a batik quilt, so nothing has to match good. Uh, the blue is going to be a common thing. And then whatever you want to make the center out of. And I just picked out some jewel tone colors out of them. I have six different ones. I was actually working on another square at the time that I messed up. And I thought, well, what can I do with that little two and a half inch square? Uh, so I come up with this. It was a great way to use up my random uh, squares. I had lots of batiks as well. So we'll go ahead and get started on this. And I'll get it all set up and I'll bring you back. I have all these laid out now. So my first step to doing this was to just stack up all of the colors. Hold it up like that and see what you think of it. If it looks good with black, you could also do it with a white or a gray or even a tan as a background. That would look good as well. Have them all lined up. You're just gonna take your ruler and go point to point. And you're going to cut that down with your rotary cutter. And that will give you two of each kind as such. These would still be stacked together. Some stacked. Now these ones you want to be a little more precise on, which I have not done, but I do have some cut here. You're just going to measure that out. And it should be five inches across the top. So you're going to divide that in three. So that should be one and three eighths inch. You're going to mark that line off at the very edge with a pencil or you know a fabric marker of whatever kind you have and then down here you're going to mark it off with quarter inch marks and you need three of them so you're just going to start with your first line down here which is your first quarter inch and you're going to go at the top, you're going to go to that one and three eighths mark and you're going to cut that down. The reason you want that quarter inch is because you're going to have a seam allowance on these stri strips as you sew them together. So you need that quarter inch down there. Once you get that one cut, you'll go to that next quarter inch mark and your next one and three eighths mark. And then you'll cut that down. So that will leave you with three sections. As such, mine are a little out of order because I did sew one together already. So all you're going to do is you need six pieces per section or per square. So I just, in the last one, I used six of one of six different colors. This one, I'm just going to kind of spread out and see what colors I have to work with. So I don't end up with two of the same colors together. So pink is a different one on the inside. And it looks like we don't have no red on that middle. So we can do pink and red. And then we got a green and an orange. And then we have a purple. And 
and a blue. So now we're just going to go ahead and take them to the sewing machine. You're going to flip that over. I lined mine up on the bottom. As you can see, peak on top and then the peak to the shorter end of the bottom. Make sure that's in the camera there. So you want to line that peak of your orange up to that point of your blue, the shorter end of the blue. And then make sure these, these corners are lined up up there. Then you're going to go ahead and take your quarter inch seam. Then you're going to open that up and go to the next one and do the same thing. Line the peak of the red to the shorter end of the orange and make sure these seams or this peak is lined up with this corner of the orange. And you're going to do that for that and then you're going to turn around and you're going to do just the opposite. So make sure they're lined up, quarter inch seam, open it up. So we'll just go through them all. We'll get them, we'll get them all sewn up and ironed and then I will bring you back. Uh, you're going to have a lot of bulk down here take off when we trim up our square. So I'll get it done and I'll meet you back here. As I'm doing this one, I changed stitch it this time. It turned out a little bit different. I just put those two pieces together, those two and those two, and then sewed them together. And for some reason, these went opposite directions when last time it all met in the center. So we are just shy by an eighth of an inch from two and a half inches on here. So we're going to go ahead and I just lined up my middle line on my square with the middle line on here. And we're going to trim these off. Bottom. Flip that over. And it looks like that's about as far as I'm going to get for a solid block out of that. Take those tails off and then the most of our bulk is gone. So I did a scant quarter inch on all my seams on this, which is just for those who are new. It's just a little bit less than a quarter inch. Um, so like a hair to one side or the other. Um, so that's what I did on those strips to sew them together. So if I did the background with a scant quarter inch as well, I still may come up with the same size as what this one is. So I think that's what I'll do instead of trying to differ it. So now we're just going to go ahead and we're going to put our, find the center of your square. You can just fold that in half and crease that. And then also the center of your block, uh, triangle, fold that in half and crease that. And when you open them up, I don't know if you can see that there's a crease there. So you're just going to line them two creases up there and you're going to pin that into place. And then line your edges up as well before you stick the pin in or before you bring it back up. That way it stays straight. And then you'll just do the same thing with the other side to get that one in. So I'll go ahead and get that other one on there. I'll bring it to the sewing machine, take a scant quarter inch seam, and bring it back here, and we'll get the other two sides on. So once we have those two edges sewn on, we'll have a square that looks like this. So let's just go ahead and take our square and cut those dog tails off of there. And then we'll go ahead and fold that in half again. Okay, then we'll go ahead and take our quarter inch seam there and I'll come iron it flat and I'll come back here and we'll see how to put that border on there. I did want to mention when we cut these off that top of that uh, little square we did, to hang on to those so you can sew those together and it will form another one. Go ahead and get this done and I'll come back and we'll move on to the next step. So there's our square and we'll go ahead and get them dog ears cut off once again. We're just lining that up with the edge of fabric at both ends. Okay, so we have that piece done there. Now we're going to do this for this part of it there, that border. So we are going to need four one and a half by one and a half inch squares. Okay, we have those squares. And then we are going to need four one and a half by three and a half inch strips.
So we're going to go ahead and we're going to flip these over onto this piece. Oh, I guess that was upside there. And we're going to do our quarter inch seam there and do the same with this piece. And then we're going to go ahead and put these onto here with a quarter inch seam. Do you mind if that you don't want to pass that to get onto that diamond shape there? So do keep that in mind when you're at sew machine sewing. You want to double check to make sure that you're not infringing on that. And so we'll go ahead and get those three pieces sewn up like that. Uh, we'll iron them flat and then we'll meet you back here. Our block all sewn together now, as you can see. So it is time to cut our blues to put around the block, such as we have here. Uh, so that will be these blues here. Uh, and then we'll go to our black. I did want to take a minute to show. I did sew those ends we had laying there uh, together. So now we have a I have a triangle here that we could just put either black or the opposite of the other scraps on the other end to form a square as well. So we'll go ahead and we'll hang on to that and set that aside. Um, I did want to mention, because I didn't show cutting the black squares here, so whatever size your square is, to get your, your triangle, you want to take the same size square. So this was, I believe, two and a half. So you want to take a two and a half inch square and cut that on the diagonal to get your triangles to put on that. So with this one here, it's five inches. So we got five inch charm squares here. We'll just put those on the diagonal and cut those. So then we have four triangles attached to this. So we'll go ahead and get started. We'll find the center of this, the center of this, pin those together, do that on the two sides. Then after we get those on, we'll open those up, iron them flat, trim off the dog ears, and then we'll go ahead and attach the other two. So I'll get this set on and then I will come back and show you the black. So we have the blue done on our black now. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna trim off these dog ears. I don't know what I managed to do, but when I was sewing those, this one on, I ended up somehow flipping a breaker to every light in the house. So, as you can see, our our on point is not on point anymore. Uh, so it goes sideways when we have the block solid either way. Um, so now we're going to add the black in. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take two layer cake uh, pieces, which are 10 by 10. If you don't have layer cake, you can certainly cut it from yardage. And line those up and once again just cut those point to point. Attach those the same way that we attached the last ones. Now I'll flip it around to the other side. So I'll go ahead and get those two attached, trim these off, iron them flat, trim them off, and then we're going to attach the last two. Uh, once I get that done, then I'll bring it back. Tower square all together now. And they do come out 14 and a half. So I need a 12 and a half inch square on mine. That's just a size I decided to go with. I'm doing it like this. I'm just lining this up because you want the same amount on each side to, to cut your square. The square is 12 and a half. So we want six and a quarter at any, any given point from that. So whenever I work with black, I always keep my lint roller. You don't got to get an expensive one. Just something to get the color off the black because you are going to pick up lint. Okay, so there's your finished block. And that's the one we did prior. So you can see the size of the square and difference of how we put it together. So just work with your inside and just come up with your own little design. Like I said, you could do a four patch if you wanted to. Uh, you could do an hourglass. You could just do some scrappy on the inside. Just sew some pieces together until you get something that looks good to you. Remember, it's your quilt. There's no mistakes. It's their design choices. So there you have it, guys. Let me know in the comments below what uh, you think you'd make out of this. If you found this video useful, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. It really helps our channel grow. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe because we'd love to have you here at Soul Granny. So thanks all. Have a good day. Bye.